ions are where atoms have either lost electrons, i.e. metals, so have a positive charge, or gained electrons, where they are where non metals, so have a negative charge. We also have to consider isotopes. An isotope are elements with the same atomic number, in the case of chlorine, that would be 17, but a different number of neutrons. Chlorine 35 has 8, 18 neutrons, chlorine 37 has 20 neutrons. Different number of atoms have these arrangements. This will change their atomic mass. This means that the atomic mass given in the periodic table is an average. It's an average of the number of atoms with each of the num different number of protons present. As you can see, in chlorine the relative atomic mass is 35.3. In silver, it will work out as 108, as the average of two isotopes, 107, 109. Atoms are three-dimensional, and monatomic will obviously just be one atom present. Diatomic, as mentioned previously, involves two atoms being fastened together, as you can see with O2 and the like. In covalent bonding, this is between non-metals and involves the sharing of outer electrons so that both the atoms present are pulling on the negative outer, uh, outer electrons to give the, the feeling for the atom of having a full outer shell. The definition of covalent bonding is a shared pair of electrons between two positive, being pulled on by two positive ions. This gives several different shapes for molecules. Linear shape, where it's just two atoms that are joined together. You can get an angular or bent shape, where we have a ratio of two to one. We can add a pyramid shape, pyramidal, where we have a ratio of one to three as in ammonia, and we can have a tetrahedral shape where we have a ratio of 1 to 4, as in methane. Bonding. Bonding is the backbone of chemistry. You need to understand this. There are four basic different types. Metallic, which is positive ions surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. Ionic, this is between metals and non-metals and involves the metal losing an electron, the non-metal gaining the electron and as opposites attract, they stick together by electrostatic attraction. Then we have two types of covalent. We have a covalent network. This is like one giant atom, one giant molecule structure. Very, very strong. And we have small, discrete covalent molecular. This is strong inter internal bonds, but weak between the, the different molecules. The properties that these give are for metallic, high melting and boiling point. For ionic, high melting and boiling point. Covalent network, high melting and boiling point. For discrete covalent molecular, low melting and boiling point. 
this means that metals are mainly solid ionic compounds mainly solid covalent compounds solid and discrete molecular generally liquids or gases at room temperature it also means that metals conduct electricity very well because of the free electrons from the sealed electrons that they're present in. Ionic conduct electricity very well as liquids or in the molten state but do not conduct in the solid state as the ions are not free to move. Covalent networks do not conduct electricity with the exception of graphite and covalent molecular never conduct electricity at all. Electrolysis put in a big positive and negative either side of an ionic compound that's in solution or molten will allow that compound to be separated. The positive ions will go to the negative terminal the negative ions will go to the positive terminal. An ionic formula involves leaving the charges in so that they can be C 